Thanks for tuning in at Brackies. Hello everyone and welcome to video number 17 on making a multiplayer FPS in Unity. This video is going to be very short, but very, very important. We are going to be talking about matchmaking and how you can connect players over the internet instead of just running multiple clients on one computer as we've done so far. So finally, you will be able to send the game to your friends and play it with them wherever they are, also uh, on the local network, of course. So um, it's, it's very easy to set this up, therefore this short video, but I will be explaining a bit about uh, how it works and uh, some of the pricing stuff. Um, so yeah, without further ado, let's jump right into today's video. So you can see that I'm here in Unity and uh, the window that we want to find is under Window and then Services. And I like to dug it over here by the Inspector panel. And the first thing that you want to do here is uh, select an organization. If you haven't created one of those, uh, you can go ahead and do it. I believe it will prompt you to do that. And uh, I'm just going to select brackets here and then I'm going to select create in order to create the Unity project ID. And that's because uh, any uh, services that includes the multiplayer uh, uh, API, it includes uh, stuff like analytics, uh, cloud builds, uh, ads, all of that uh, that Unity provides needs to be linked with your project and it does that through a Unity project ID. And that's what we are going to be creating here. Or if you already have one set up, you can uh, click that button there and type it in. So I'm going to uh, hit create here and now it's basically done exactly that. You can see I have access to ads, analytics, cloud build, all of that stuff and then the multiplayer tab down here. And that's why we are going to uh, go down and click that and you can say, see that it loads just for a moment here. And then you can see your configuration overview and currently it says that there's no configuration presence. Uh, and uh, what we can do to change this is simply hit go to dashboard. We also have some other uh, things we can do in here such as uh, go to the settings tab. If you want to rename your project name, uh, change the organization or unlink, unlink the project uh, from the Unity uh, project. Uh, so that's uh, that's all uh, settings that you have access to. You cannot delete your uh, Unity project ID in here, but you can do that through the dashboard up here. So let's go on the multiplayer and hit go to dashboard. And it's going to open this up in your uh, default web browser. In my case, that's uh, Google Chrome. So here we have it. And it's going to ask you to set this up. And we do this by first specifying the maximum amount of players that we uh, set a room for uh, per room. So in a lobby, I want to have maybe a maximum of uh, 16 players. So I'm going to uh, type in 16 here and hit save. And we can basically change this at any point. So it's not really important. Just uh, choose a number that's big enough for you. And you can see you can uh, change it very quickly right here. Then we have this statistic called the CCU usage. CCU means concurrent users and it's something that uh, we often talk about when talking about uh, network games and it basically means the total amount of users that are uh, on your game at any given time. And of course, this is going to vary depending on the day and the time of day and uh, over the uh, life cycle of your or the lifetime of your game. Uh, but when um, uh, billing or when uh, calculating how much you're going to pay uh, any kind of server for any kind of uh, service, uh, you like to kind of um, predict how many concurrent users you're going to need or how much room you're going to need for X amount of concurrent users. And this here should show you, with maybe a, a bit of error, uh, how many users are currently on the game. And of course, we haven't loaded up this game anywhere, so there's currently no concurrent users on there. You can also see that my global CCU limit, meaning the, uh, total, or the maximum amount of people that can be on the game at any time, is 200. That's because I have Unity Pro. If you have the default uh, Unity version, you're going to have uh, a number of 20 here. And this is only for when developing your game. Um, the t uh, t amount of 20 people is going to be fine. This is only for testing on a few computers, so uh, you're not going to need any more than that. But when you act actually publish the game, then you want to go in here under Activate Live Mode. Live Mode, you can see here, is for multiplayer projects that are about to be publicly released to end users. Uh, so that means that when you want to actually share this with uh, the world, and it's no longer in the uh, um, 
in the uh, development phase, but maybe uh, in a testing phase, uh, such as early access and beta or just release, then you're going to go in here and uh, activate it. And from there on out, you're going to be paying for how much traffic you use. And the reason for this is because uni uh, servers are expensive and uh, Unity have set up some servers uh, that does matchmaking. That means they connect users, set up rooms and uh, all of that stuff. And also relay servers that make sure uh, that they connect, uh, that when a client connects, it connects to Unity servers first and then they go from Unity servers to whatever other client that you want to communicate with. And it does this to uh, avoid problems with uh, firewall and NAT configuration and that kind of stuff so that it just works. All of this stuff can be done manually. You can do this on your own. However, it's actually kind of difficult. And if you've never played around with servers before and you find the stuff that I show you in this video to be um, maybe uh, kind of difficult, uh, I wouldn't recommend uh, beginning with that uh, yet. I mean, uh, this kind of stuff can be fairly advanced. It can definitely be done. Of course, it can be taught. If you, if you really want to get into it, do that. Um, but uh, it's not something that you just do overnight. So, uh, and that's why Unity provides this, and I definitely uh, recommend that you uh, use it. So let's look a bit on pricing, shall we? So here you have the Unity uh, services uh, page, and you can see that it says here that it's backed by Unity with Unity Matchmaker servers and the Unity Relay servers. So that was what I was talking about. And you can see that the personal edition includes 20 CCU for multiplayer development. And again, this is only on the development and includes 200 uh, for the professional edition. So. Unity charges 0.49 uh, dollars per gigabyte uh, used uh, by the Unity Matchmaker and Relay servers, um, and only those. All of the other traffic um, doesn't matter. And you can see here that they have made a tool to estimate the monthly bill that you're going to have, and uh, this is very much an estimate. Things can vary. Uh, it's very hard to predict how many concurrent users you are going to have, how many messages they will send, how much, uh, how large these uh, messages are, and all of that stuff. But it's here, so if you have an idea of what this is going to be, you can check it out. For now, I would just worry about building the game and uh, seeing if you can you can actually turn it into something that's uh, worth publishing. And, and if you do, then it's maybe time to look into this kind of stuff. So, uh, but it's it's definitely here, and you should definitely read up on uh, different alternatives to uh, publishing the, your game online. It's 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 a whole world out there. Good, so that's how Unity's multiplayer system works and how their matchmaking works. And if we go back into Unity now, we can refresh our configuration and it's going to list here the same information that we had on uh, in the Chrome tab here. So I have a pro subscription plan with 200 CCU limit and uh, we're currently using zero. And what we're basically able to do now is if you go under our network manager, we don't need to change a single thing here. Instead, we can simply go ahead and hit play. And then instead of using LAN host and LAN client, we go and enable the matchmaker there. And uh, Unity now can uh, uh, create an internet match, meaning a room for people to join. And uh, then it can, of course, find an internet match. And uh, it's really that easy to use. So you type in a room name, you hit create, and then you find and it will uh, connect you to one of them and you can just um you can just choose to connect to the correct room and uh, everything works. Of course, this uh, UI is very temporary and I definitely want to change this in, a, in an upcoming video. So that was all we needed to do. What I'm going to do now is simply uh, build this for uh, the Mac that I have standing nearby. And I'm going to build it for the Windows client here as well. And then I'm just going to record that the two are connecting uh, uh, to each other and uh, I'm going to make sure to put my Mac on a separate network uh, so that you can see that it o doesn't only work on uh, LAN. So let's do that now and uh, of course when I'm uh, building here just going to build settings and then I'm switching between Windows and uh, Mac and then I'm just hitting build 
and choosing a place for that to happen. So that's all I'm doing. If you don't have the uh, Mac OS X here, you're going to need to rerun uh, the installer and choose it as a, the, a installable component. So you have the ability to um, choose whether or not you want to be able to export to Mac. And so if you has, haven't chosen that, you should go ahead and rerun the installer. So I'll see you in a little bit. So as you can see, I've set up my Mac alongside my Windows computer and I'm just now creating a test lobby on the Mac. Then I'm switching to the window, hitting find internet match and then I'm choosing the lobby that we just created and that should bring the two players inside of the same room. And you can see that all of our network code is working. So that was pretty much it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.